Hello Filter class. Today's lesson is on utilizing the crystal filter. And at first this filter can really throw you off and you wonder what in the world can I use this filter for? But I'm going to show you a, a variety of things that you can do with this filter and I hope that it inspires you um, in some small way. Here is the uh, layout I made with this filter and I used, if you zoom in, I used my free patterns and my um, vellum styles to make these papers in the background. Uh, see I just simply um, made a shape and uh, used the um, new adjustment layer for patterns and chose that pattern and then applied the layer style to it. It was kind of cool how that turned out but I just wanted to show you how you could use some of the resources in uh, my forum and make sure that you go download those and play with them at some time. But here is where I actually applied the uh, crystallized filter and why I decided uh, to use it um, in this manner and I thought it worked out really well because especially in the parts where the text goes out into uh, blend in with the background there's just enough white around it um, to be able to keep the text legible and of course I used a different vellum on these circles so um, let's, before I show you how to do that, let's um, go and uh, look at the filter and how it works directly on a photo. Um, I'm going to duplicate this photo here to play with it. And if you go to the filter, pixelate, and crystallize, it brings up this box. And there's not a whole lot uh, to this as far as settings. Um, we simply have one slider for the cell size. Of course you can click on the minus to see what it looks like when you you know applied to the whole uh, image or the plus sign to zoom in. Um, as with all filters when you click down with this hand on the mouse you see the before and the after. Um, in in the preview. What this filter does is it um, looks for uh, places with similar color. You're going to see up here in uh, the leafy area you can see the color of all these uh, crystal blocks are very similar and then as you move over here there's a little bit more green and uh, you can see the the colors are different so it tries to find similar colors and then um, and then creates bigger blocks with them and depending on what the slider is is how big those blocks are it or the crystal shapes is what it's calling it. It doesn't really make a crystal. That's why it's so deceiving. Um, it just makes these blocks uh, where it finds uh, what it thinks is similar color. And so if you go down and apply just even a small amount to it and click OK, um, you see it, you know, isn't very useful. <laughs> It just even this small amount, and I mean you can go and apply it again, and you know have it increase that. But what in the world is the purpose for that? So you know just using it straight on a photo. I mean you could, but here I'll show you um, some uh, uh, better reasons. I mean I did use it on a photo, but before we do that, I want to finish this and show you how I did it on here. If you take your knowledge that it finds similar colors and try to purposefully use this, which is what I did here, by limiting the amount of colors you apply this filter to, uh, that um, can be very effective and you can do um, things on purpose with this tutorial if that makes any sense. 
Um, what I did, and let's see if we can um, easily duplicate this, I have these circles and I'm actually going to take this uh, layer style off for a minute and I'm gonna get that color and I'm gonna undo to put my layer style back so I have that color which actually came from my photo um, and then I'm going to uh, get the background color and these are the two colors I use to make my text so if I turn this Y back on let's this is the layer it's applied to so I'm going to turn that off let's dissect this those are my three text layers and um, they're actually uh, a color I was working with at first and uh, so I changed them later but I'm going to go ahead and hit control J for the W and turn off that original one right click and simplify and do the same thing control J to copy turn off my original right click simplify and the same thing for the Y right click and simplify and then I took these uh, a copy, Y copy, and W copy and right clicked. I held down my control key to make all three of them active and I'm going to right click and merge them and so now I have um, a simplified text all on one layer. Now you remember I said I changed the color later. I mean I could have made this color right from the beginning by just changing the color of the text layers but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do it now by uh, filling in each of these. <coughs> okay so you can see how this works without the filter you kind of lose some of the W you don't even get that W but to use this purposefully I'm going to create a new layer get my rectangular marquee tool and draw a box that's larger than my text and I'm going to fill that box with my other color that I was working with. Um, I initially wanted it to match exactly to my um, circles and it did work well until I applied the vellum to it later. Um, that's why I'm using the exact color to my circles. Uh, <coughs> I'll show you that again in a minute. Control D to deselect. So I have um, two layers I'm working with now. I have this with all three layers on one layer and underneath it I have this um, just a rectangular block and I'm going to right click and I'm going to merge down because for this filter to be effective I need it all to be on one layer. Now I have two colors remember I said if you simplify colors uh, down to just two or three you can use these with more purpose and so I have two colors on my layer and now I can go to the filter pixelate and crystallize and you see before and after what it's doing to um, the edges because it's finding the edges where the two colors are and it's distorting them into these crystals and I can move my slider around let's zoom out and you can see it doesn't look so much like a letter when I get too high um, you know when you go uh, really high it just kind of makes these <laughs> three blocks of letters so I wanted my letter to be recognizable and so I zoomed back in and I think actually what I did was I kept my cell size really low and clicked OK and um, I went ahead and I ran the filter a couple more times on it and because each time I got a few different colors in here you see which helps uh, to make kind of a almost a um, 
uh, fuzzy feeling. And then when I was done, got my magic eraser tool and clicked on this white area and I was left, click in the middle of the A, and I was left with just my text. And so that's how I got my results. Um, I'm going to uh, show you, let's see, where's this layer? I'm going to get rid of this layer and do the one that you can see I probably applied a much smaller filter originally. And I'm going to turn it off the layer styles so I can show you the effect I initially was going for before I put the vellum on. And so um, you can see why I wanted to use the same color as the blocks because now that edge just blends right into the circle blocks as well as off the blocks. So um, that was what I did but then I ended up adding the vellum because I liked the way the vellum looked. I changed the colors so many times on this layout. Let's look at some other purposes. Let's scroll down. I've got some uh, down at the bottom. Um, first of all, you can use this kind of to create a bokeh in the background. And um, we've done this in uh, other tutorials here at Hummies World, but I wanted to uh, share this with you. Um, basically, let's get another copy of this original. And so I had an original, and then I made my selection and control j it to a new layer. And on my original, I um, went to the filter, blur, and Gaussian blur, and this is what we've normally done just to kind of give a depth of field to the background of the uh, photo in um, some of the one of the lessons in course two. Uh, but to take this a little bit step further, I duplicated this layer and then went to Filter, Pixelate, Crystallize, and chose kind of a little bit higher setting this time. <coughs> um, I don't even remember where I was at. <laughs> I, you just have to play with it, and I just created one, and now you can see that that doesn't look very good at all, but then I went and lowered the opacity, because you remember I duplicated it, so I have the Gaussian blur layer, and then the bulk, and then the uh, crystal layer above it, and I just reduced the opacity of this crystal layer until it kind of gave a little bit of a bokeh feel in the background. And so um, you can see, I think I did better the first time. You've got to play around with it. Here's the uh, first one. Kind of gives a more of a bokeh feel in the background. So that's uh, one technique that you could use this for. And then another technique would be, why is this not? Hmm. Well, I don't know why these two layers are not working. I've messed them up. So I'm going to just recreate this. Control J. So um, what I did down here with this layer that's not working, it's got a little funky thing going on, <laughs> was to create a frame using a layer mask. Now I'm going to go ahead and continue to use a fake uh, layer mask even though Photoshop Elements 9 has this um, uh, create a layer mask so I could just hit that right now and apply it to that but since so many people are using different 
uh, versions of Photoshop Elements, I'm going to go ahead and do the fake one. But if you have nine, you can just hit this right here and um, create a new layer and do what I'm doing right here on this. But uh, for everyone else, let's um, create a new layer mask for hue and saturation and then just close out that adjustment and move this layer below your photo layer. Um, now um, control G to group them together. This was actually working a while ago. If we hit this layer mask and do a control I, why is this not working? We should be able to still see all of our photo. Hmm. Let's try putting another layer underneath. Um I'm thinking. <laughs> that shouldn't matter. Let's try putting this above this and grouping it that way. And it should be concealing it all. Well, I'll be doggone. This was just, I think something is funky gone with my computer. I bet you if I closed this out and reopened it, it would work. Uh, because it was working before. Um, I hate wasting time and letting you think. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and, and uh, play with this uh, layer mask. Even though it's not uh, working properly. I do not know what the deal was. Okay, let's go ahead and play with it and move forward. Let's get the layer mask created. Um, somehow the grouping is not is not working right now with the fake layer mask. But what we're going to do is you saw when you pr press, just as we've done in many of my other tutorials, you click on the mask and cl do Control I white reveals and Control I black conceals. So let's make it black, all black. And then we're going to take the um, rectangular marquee tool and we're going to draw a framed area of the photo. And um, click on your layer mask and uh, you can use your paint bucket tool or keyboard shortcuts and just fill that area in with white. So now you can see on your layer mask that we have uh, the white block and so control D to deselect. Now in your layer mask um, you have two colors and you remember when I said you can purposefully use this better when you have just two or or three colors or four just a small amount of colors and as we've learned in other tutorials you can click on your alt key and click on that layer mask and you can see that layer mask a lot better now I'm going to go to filter pixelate crystallize and zoom out so we can see the edge and so what happens now is you can adjust the cell size to make this frame something uh, really funky or not so funky and click OK and so you've actually ran this directly on uh, the layer mask so I'm going to hit control um, or alt and the layer mask again um, to go back to my photo. Now I should be able to just control G and group these <laughs> 
and uh, I have that work on my layer mask but it's not and I'm not quite sure why uh, because it would be really cool if I could show you the effect but um, it is not uh, working um, and I'm I know it's got to be that way and not this way because see that's not working <laughs> it's not doing anything that way um, so my computer's acting funky but I'm pretty sure that if you put this here and do control G you should be able to um, see that photos got the high opacity something funky's going on but you should be able to see the photo with um, the uh, layer mask applied all around it. In fact, let's try this. Let's see if we can't even get the effect in uh, the full version. Create layer mask. There's the full effect. That's what the other one's supposed to be doing. <laughs> um, I'm not sure why my computer's being funky. And because it did work when I was playing before I started recording and so now I've made this um, crazy edge and you can do it much more subtle uh, than I did I wanted to do crazy so you could see uh, how it works so let's move on I am sorry maybe uh, you all could get that to work on your computer here's something else that I did it's kind of cool I made a background layer with the gradient so let's make a new layer and I have these two colors I had obviously a green when I was playing I'm gonna get uh, the background to foreground gradient and just draw that here and now once again we're working with uh, two uh, colors and so if you go to the filter pixelite pixelate and crystallize um, you can see I can really bump this up and because there's only two colors in there this made for a really subtle kind of cool background and if you added a texture layer and blended it with this that would even look uh, more cool so um, there's got to be some great purpose for a background like this. This one actually turned out much prettier than this green one I had going on. I must have had a different gradient because it goes from from a gray to green, gray to green uh, than, than this one. This one I think is really subtle and, and pretty so you can just make a simple background with it. And something else, one last thing I want to show you is this one actually made kind of a uh, camouflage effect but um, you can use this filter with other filters and I'll go ahead and uh, create a new layer and uh, fill it with my background color and then I'm gonna go to filter um, texture and stained glass. Now the stained glass actually does work with the foreground and background color so um, that's why I purposefully made my background layer the darker color because it's going to contrast and work with this uh, foreground color over here. <coughs> now I'm gonna go ahead and make my cell size a little smaller and so you can see it's made this um, stained glass effect and um, you could change the border thickness so it's more white now the light intensity it just puts this big thing there it's kind of stupid so I'm gonna click OK and I have this stained glass um, which is what I had on this layer but when I applied the and I must have had black as my foreground color here but when I went and applied and added the crystallize to it um, you can see I'm zooming way out uh, with the cell size way up it almost makes uh, like big confetti everywhere and down lower it makes makes me think of a party 
<laughs> with confetti thrown everywhere. So there may be some uses that you can find in playing uh, with the other filters to generate a lot of the other filters will generate some kind of shape or pattern of uh, two colors just as uh, that one did I'm going to run this again and uh, lower the cell size a whole lot and uh, you can see this just kind of gave a cool pattern to the background. That actually looks a little better than the last one. It looks a little more usable. Um, so that's some of the things that I could think of that you can do. Um, I know I know of one other thing that you can do with it and I'm going to make that it, it works in conjunction with a, another um, uh, filter and uh, so to get because this video is getting long already I'm going to uh, apply uh, it on the next lesson as a lesson for the next filter so you'll get to see this uh, used in one more way in the next lesson anyway I hope you are inspired and can think of something cool to do with this and I'm going to turn on that and apply a blending mode and see what happens. Ooh, <laughs> even different. See, we just play. We like to play. Okay, yay! I look forward to seeing what you're going to do with this. Bye!